Hello, everybody. I contractually cannot go that long without, refer without referencing Spawn at some point. So today, we're going to do another uh, five Spawn comics. Uh, cover Angela a little bit, too. We covered Angela number one in the, in the last five Spawn comics video, so we'll get to that. Let's start with, let's start with the current saga. Um, Spawn is in hell, at least in the main book. Spawn is in hell uh, with Haunt, and uh, they're out to find Haunt a cure, because supposedly uh, he's dying. I think that there's an artist change here, and um, Carlo Barberi is, you know, he's doing fine. But, uh... Um, yeah, but it does seem a little more sparse to me than uh, maybe some other, especially when I, it's probably not fair to him because Brett Booth's been around, especially when I compare like the Brett Booth art that we'll, uh, see, and then I'm not going to compare him to Capullo in the Angela comic. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so at the same time, while Spawn, well, I'm sorry, Spawn is in, Spawn is actually in heaven, um, Sin, who's Coglistro, is is in hell, and he's doing like sort of a Game of Thrones thing. In the last issue, we we saw Cataclysm, which is the guy that's running hell right now. He looks a lot like him, but this is his son. Um, and so we get to see basically Coglistro be way more powerful than uh, we've seen in the past. And he's done with the Game of Thrones stuff, and then it's all violence from here on out for for old. Uh, Sin or Cogs or whatever we're calling him now. Um, for there are th right now there are like three players in this you, celestial game: Heaven, Hell, and then Gaia. We haven't got much Gaia yet. We'll get it in the next. Uh, I hate these. I've hated. I hated them in 1993, and I hate these people in 2023. I'm going on 30 years of hating those people. Uh, that stupid channel stuff. So we got. Uh, I mean, you know. Cogalister here is just basically, yeah, he's just a, he's just getting a little bit uh, over, overconfident, let's say. Uh, they are showing him powered up a lot here, so way more than the old man version that a lot of us are used to from the early uh, issues of Spawn. Um, and then we're going to get, we get a little peek into what's happening in Green World, I guess it's called the Gaia, I don't know, maybe that's what the main person is. And we get switch, we switch back to a, a giant battle, which is, you know, it's Spawn. We're, we're always gonna be looking for giant battles here. In Gunslinger, we got a picture of a, a huge battle that we'll sh that I'll show you, it's even cooler. Um, but essentially we end this, uh, not Cataclysm's reign, we'll see what Cataclysm does. I'm sure they're gonna have to advance him a little bit because his son looks just like him and, and you know he went down pretty easy. And there was a Game of Thrones blackmail thing here. Um, that was going on in the pre in not the previous issue, but the issue, I guess it would have been uh, 340. So this the the as far as story goes, the flagship spawn title is actually getting pretty cool. I mean, I, I we'll see what they do with um uh, with this cataclysm character. Uh, but now uh, cogs here or sin or whatever we're calling them, uh has uh has gotten like two armies behind him like it's all like sort of building in a very simple sort of silly way but it's spawn and over here we find out that the virus that haunt here thinks he has it only weakens him it was never going to kill him and so for we've been going a long time uh since haunt's been a uh a supporting character in these spawn books we've been going a long time um thinking that he's going to die, and then one of his main reasons for even being around was he needed Spawn to open the dead zones, because this is where he can go uh, to get cured. Um, but yeah, after that, we find out that uh, uh, Heaven was basically planning this out the entire time, and uh, they just needed a direct line into Hell, so apparently... It used to be that heaven and hell would fight on Earth because Earth was like what connected them, and uh, now that's changed. So now we now we're in a full blown heaven and hell war. This picture is pretty cool. So I think our friend uh, Barbary is going to really do fine on this artwork, even though I noticed it being a little bit sparse uh, at the beginning there. But this this looks pretty cool. I mean, I can't really tell who's who. It's all the random sort of 
you know, glowy angels and demons and stuff, but uh, looks like it's going to be a good time here. Um, uh, and then so Spawn kills the guy that, <laughs> that revealed to him what went on. So now you have this big... You have, now you have this big problem where Spawn got tricked into opening these dead zones and it was the wrong thing to do. They were going a long time with uh, not opening the dead zones, to be honest. Like, um, you know, keeping everything on Earth. I guess it was good because they were setting up all these new books, right? So this the whole dead zone thing is around, you know, around issue 300, maybe a little bit earlier. I can't remember. And... Uh, and so there was no going out of Earth or coming in from heaven and hell, right? And uh, so that's really opened up in in a in a big way here. Um, and now you have three factions going on, and I don't think they actually finish off heaven here at first, or maybe they do. Uh, now you have three factions going on: Coglistro, who's trying to take over uh, these angel type people. Or they called it something else. Are, are there and then you have who we didn't see here we only saw a little bit is uh, Cataclysm who who looked pretty um, important in issue 3 uh, in issue 340 it looked pretty big and important but uh, you know they, they may have softened they may have softened what he really is um, just like by showing his son you know showing his son die so easy so we'll see that's what's happening in the main spawn so you know main spawn has I think probably taken over as the most interesting uh, title or as far, you know, interested spawn, right? So exciting title. In Gunslinger, we have cool stuff going on. The art's better. It's uh, Brett Booth. Um, we found out, so, you know, we got dinosaurs in the last issue that, you know, we talked about the last issue in my last video of this. And so we uh, continue to have dinosaurs. And now we're going to get on Omega Island, we're going to get dinosaurs versus like Violator and mini clowns and stuff. That's that's what's coming. Um, you know, this was a little bit of a flash forward and, you know, I'm for it, I guess. Um, you know, they continue to introduce new characters. I, I'm pretty sure Dakota's first appearance was in issue four of this. I had never seen her before anyway, so maybe she's been around. We found out in issue 20 that she's Clown's daughter. So who knows what we're gonna do? Who knows what we're gonna do with that information? That's gonna be uh, a new and fun uh, thing to happen. Um, and you know, and and then whether she's a good guy or a bad guy at this point, the way that it's written in is that she is uh, that this is a a, a team up of necessity because she's trying to break free of what's going on with her and her father. So. You know the human, uh, the human voice into this doesn't believe her, and so obviously, you know, some person with demon level powers and dinosaur magic and shit slaps a regular kid, and he's uh, and he's fine. Um, later on, they unite because they both have shitty fathers. So this kid had a bad father early on in the <laughs> in the story, and uh, of course, you know, her father's a clown. So that's about. You know, that's got to be a, in the world of Spawn, Clown being your your father's got to be a top 10 bad father to have, you know. So, maybe even maybe even higher up. Um, so, here's where we start. Obviously, we can see that uh, our regular human friend is going to have a role in the dinosaur versus demon fight. But right now, he's like, god damn it, I'm just sitting here. Something did interesting happen, because uh, they're off of Omega Island right now. Where a lot of that earlier stuff happened with uh, Spawn Omega, uh, which is a great action figure, and Plague Spawn and whatnot. Waiting for that stuff to come back, to be honest. Um, but yeah, but so something happens uh, off an island or near an island here. He finds this little skull, and he goes, then he ac accidentally comes upon a missing skull that looks eerily like those on Gunslinger's hat. Um, so I don't know what that means. That seems like it might be important. He might, um, I mean, maybe like Gunslinger's body is buried here. He went back in time, but obviously got to be buried somewhere. So I don't know. Well, we'll see. And I think we're at the same timeline now as the other books. Gunslinger used to be happening in the past, um, but I'm not sure. See, this is see, this is very cool. Uh, you know, for the the '90s comic fan, anyway. I'm sure a lot of you, I'm sure a lot of people don't like that, but I like it. Um, and then we get to go back to some early Capullo. So these Angela stories are funny. You you could see, uh, <laughs> I read the letters page at number three, and you could see Neil Gaiman, because, you know, the important part to this is uh, 
Neil Gaiman wrote this and later on decided he owned Angela. I don't know how that worked because Todd McFarlane drew. Maybe I should read those court things because in my head I was like, oh, of course he should own it. He created it. Todd was just the you know the CEO of Spawn or whatever, right? But when you look at uh, Spawn number nine, he wrote he he drew it too. So um, so I'm curious now. Now now I got for the first time ever I got curious of the Neil Gaiman versus Todd McFarlane BS. Um, so we get some early Capullo here. I think I'm pretty sure that uh, McFarlane's still drawing Spawn at this time. I didn't go check which uh, which because I think Capullo takes over like in 35. I'm, in fact, this may have been his tryout, and he was pretty damn good at it. Um, let's see. Shouldn't Spawn look at those pinups? That was cool when they did the pinups, right? Uh, Spawn 28, so, oh yeah, McFarlane and Capullo. So he's already drawing it there, at least part of, part of Spawn at this point. But yeah, so in number three, it looks like to me that Neil Gaiman is uh, distancing himself because he says, uh, he's answering the letters page, and he says that, you know, he did it for his son. He goes, that was Angela 3, and it, like the last two parts, was really written for Michael Gaiman, my son, the Spawn fan, pictured here with the rest of his hockey squirt. So, you know, he did it for he did it for his his kid because it does not feel like a Neil Gaiman book at all. In fact, there's one part in here that feels Gaiman-esque. Otherwise, you know, it, it actually feels like he was in a meeting with Todd McFarlane. They talked about plot points. Todd just basically said what the plot point should be, which is... What if Angela is put on trial in heaven for a crime she didn't commit? And even the, even the dialogue doesn't feel at all like, uh, like Neil Gaiman. And that doesn't say that it's bad. I like Gaiman. I love Gaiman. And I love, you know, obviously I love Spawn. I'm doing fucking videos about it. Um, <clears throat> but the real, the real star here is, um, is, is the moments when Capullo's really taken some time. Like... This picture of Spiky Spawn, this is because he's in a lot Elysium or Heaven or whatever we're calling it here, and his suit doesn't like it, so it's getting into like this defensive mode, and he can't help it, and uh, so it looked awesome to me. And then you just get basically get an excuse to fight. The whole reason for Spawn to come to Heaven was to testify uh, for Angela on what happened and that you know that she was actually there. But as soon as he showed himself, all the angels wanted to fight him, you know. And, uh, and then so he does some, you know, some uh, teleportation thing with his cape. Um, he's going to have to go find his cape eventually. And then he's in a dark cave with Angela. And then it implies that uh, they need to keep each other warm. And then in number three, they're already fighting and arguing. This is the only part that feels Neil Gaiman-esque. These little, these little cartoony magic demons and one of them's talking in rhymes... Um, and being a little silly, this is the only thing in here, you know, this little like goth doll, looks like Coraline or Coraline, I don't even know, could, could be playing with that. Um, you know, classic image, skinny girl sitting, um, you know, Capullo, Capullo knew who he was working for. Uh, and then, so then he, now they're all bickering to each other and they're almost fighting like a married couple, uh, while they're battling these. Demons through hell. This is the path they have to take, but there's a war. There's a battle going on in hell. Um, just, you know, blood splatter everywhere. I mean, hey, 10, 11, 12-year-old Chris was all about this, was all about this kind of stuff. Um, but it is pretty funny because they're, like, doing, like, the couple thing here where they're telling this demon to tell, um, you know, to tell the other one what they're saying. Spawn has too big of a battle axe and, you know, just sort of comedic uh in fact and then for no good reason they're all falling he's falling she's falling i don't even know why and they just get to teleport back to their homes and i can't tell if this was uh concentrate on getting back to earth yeah so he's able to tell just suddenly teleport himself back to earth and she teleports back to her apartment in heaven where her friends are just there mourning her um, and that, and that's the end of it, you know, oh, there we go. That's, that's a, that's the picture of Angela who we're all used to seeing. She's wearing more red now, but, um, yeah. And then she just basically, there's like an Ahsoka moment where, you know, you guys accused me of this and now I'm walking away from the Jedi order. 
and gets a little cosmic over here. She decides she's going to go, you know, fight and be a courier or something in the world of, you know, in, in a different part of the universe. I almost feel like, um, when I was reading this, I was like, man, is this like some, something like this happening in Wildcats or Thor or, I mean, uh, Cyber Force or Wetworks and stuff? Because she says, you know, there's a civil war in the Starn system and both sides have put out a call for open officers. She's basically going to go become a mercenary. And then the other thing to point out here is, you know, Angela is leaving heaven. She's not going to work for either of the big two. She goes, I don't have, and then, uh, I don't have to work for the big two. There are other alternatives, which is, which is image, you know, I guess, I guess that's what that was implying. So anyway, I will uh, continue while I'm reading the spawns that come in, uh, as they come in, uh, I will try to continue reading some older stuff. I want to do like spawn blood feud. I don't have the salmon Twitch books. Um, I used to have the first handful I don't know what happened to them. One day I went to go buy them on eBay. I thought that they should be dollar books. They are not dollar books. They are actually more expensive than I care to pay for Sam and Twitch books. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Five spawn books. Thank you guys.